Welcome back everyone. Today I'm hanging out with Arnold and uh, we're actually working on this 1922 Bentley Vandenbach. It's a tour car, it's a three liter. And this Bentley was really ahead of its time, primarily because it's actually equipped with an overhead cam and it's a four cylinder, but it has four valves per cylinder. And you gotta remember 1922, four valves per cylinder, that's pretty far advanced. Um, the vehicle also was significant because it had was one of the first to offer four wheel brakes. So it has four drum brakes. Um, it's also equipped with dual magneto distributors. And it also has um, these unique SU carburetors are called sloper carburetors. They're, uh, so it's got these twin SU G5 slopers. So anyway, the vehicle is having some mechanical issues. It feels like the brakes are dragging, clutch is slipping, and there's actually under load um, and idle. The vehicle is misfiring a little bit. So uh, hang in here, check us out. We're going to be working on this thing. It's pretty cool. Just behind the scenes, nothing special. It's definitely only hitting on three. Let's, let's put it on for a second and we'll uh, 
how do we can you pull individual plug wires to see which cylinder is dead or is that too hard? So I I would my thought just based on here, it it sounds like it's only running on three. And I don't know. Why don't I just foul the plug? Because it seems like it's running pretty rich. It does seem to run a rich. Um, do these, you have to unscrew I'm them? Steaming now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's no fan, right? right? How do these come out? I know we're got, I know it's going to be one of these rear ones, it sounds like. So I'm wondering if you pull, if you pull number three and number four. So this is number three. If I just unscrew that, I don't want to do anything without your consent. But does this just yeah, pop out? Should just come out. Yeah. So can we do a? Okay. So I wonder if we run it, but it's hot now. If you just let it on there, and you know, you're gonna get shocked getting that. That'll shock you. So these are the two I think that are missing back here. And this wire is a little burned up too. I wonder how we. Um, this one's burned. So the insulator's burned up. Does it just pull off? Okay, so this plug, this could be our, our issue right here, because this plug wire is burned Third up. Wire. It's melted through, actually, all the way. Yeah. So that could be our miss on cylinder number four. It's arcing. I heard the arc, too. Did you hear it a little bit? No, I couldn't hear it. Uh, yeah, it sounded like there was an arc on this side when we lifted it up. Yeah. Um, it's got spare spark plugs right here, I see. Huh? Right. No spare spark plug wires? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, that's probably our misfire. Right. I would think. Six liter and an eight liter. I'm gonna show this. My uh, one of my teachers, his last name is Kingsbury, and they have a Kingsbury Works Hendon uh, Northwest Nine. I guess that must have been the um, bodybuilder. The bodybuilder in yeah. England, 1917. So that's, that's when, when it was founded. Kind of LGD, so coach work. Yeah. You know, it implies that sounds like a fuel pump is on or something. Yeah. Um, wow, that's beautiful, beautiful, remarkable machine, huh? Yeah, this is a finest of the finest. So it has look at that starter. So it's still considered a brass era, no, just or trimmed no? in brass, just trimmed in brass. And you can see it, you know, they got some brass trim on it, but. You know, just depend on what the owner wanted with the polished hood and the nickel lights. So that's a stainless steel hood or? Aluminum, just polished aluminum. Oh, uh, polished aluminum, and that's how they would have come? Yeah. Wow. And this is just, uh, what would this material? Is it's that... Probably German silver. German silver. And then these are nickel. Brass, they, brass lights are nickel. They probably were converted. They were acetylene originally, do you think? Or do you think no, these were always electric? No, electrified then. See, they're typical electric. electric. So this is interesting too. So it's got what is this just a boot for for the that's for the brakes. So that's like the mechanical brake yeah, you lever. Yeah, see the pull here. Okay. So that's for the brake. It's got a yoke on each side in. So as you turn, you know, then it doesn't affect your brakes. Oh, I got it. No, none of that is affecting None of that affects the. I tried that too, going down the hill to turn it. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing locks up in that. That's an adjuster right there, probably. That's where you probably adjust it. No, it's, that's a lubricator. That's Adjustment a lubricator is right here. Oh, okay. Just pull the you got pin. lubricator there. Massive drum brakes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So you got a turnbuckle for adjustment. Oh. And that's just a rod. And this is interesting. The leaf springs in the back. So what, why would they have a sleeve like this on the leaf? Well, they're called gators. So they, they, what they do is they fill it, wrap there with grease. Uh-huh. And then, or fill them with grease. They even have, some of them have, you've got a grease fitting right here, I see alamite, that. and you pump them full of grease. And that just keeps all the dirt, because back then it was all dirt roads. Wow. And that, yeah, just kept them, kept the dirt and stuff out. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, look at this. This must have been an option for this car, huh? Four-wheel brakes. Yeah. 1922, <laughs> that was amazing. Most cars, you know, Duesenberg really was the first production car, but, yeah, they probably for an, you know, an English car. You can open the other side. Now, this is a, um, just a touring vehicle, or what, what yeah. is? Yeah, touring, touring, um, you know, touring body. 
Wow. It's a beautiful piece of machinery. And you did see there was a fuel leak on that? Yeah. Yeah, this is leaking here, this fitting. I don't know, some of it's residual off the carburetor, but... Yeah, it was dripping at the... Yeah, because some, some of these were in the back fires or whatever. Yeah, it definitely wasn't firing on all four. But that's interesting with the dual ignition. So I wonder if that... Um, how would that work if you eliminated... The wire would it still fire off the other, or would that still? No, because two separate distributors, separate coils, separate distributors. Okay. So you got that's why you have dual ignition kind of deal. But I, I think you're right. It's that burned wire. I'll have to get some wire, and then the um. Might have fouled the plugs too. <coughs> yeah, it wasn't fire. running that bad. But now it's now it's definitely got I think fouled spark plugs. So auto vac is this our fuel pump? A, yeah, that's a vacuum tank. It would suck the fuel into the canister and then it gravity feeds the carburetor. And it pulls the vacuum from the intake yeah, manifold. Yeah, there's the vacuum right here. So it's just got a plunger in there and that just... Yeah. Oh, that's it's neat. A, it's like a needle valve and a, you okay. know, a float. And it you know works on vacuum just drawn from the tank. And the spare plugs are just... just where you put them. Spare yeah. plugs. So that was a common occurrence. What's the, um, the takeoff at the back of the cylinder head? What's that device? Is that a? Um, is that for the like that, the tachometer? That's or something? A, actually you know right angle drive for the the dynamo the generator. Oh, so that's inside. Generator and then the tack drive is inside underneath the oh cowl. Oh my god! Because it's it's overhead cam. Oh. The, see the tower drive here, but it's overhead cam. Okay, so this is really that's really really advanced overhead cam, right? At this oh, for at this that area? age, yeah. I've done a lot of earlier cars that had it, but Bentley was in production overhead. overhead cam. So the Europeans always had that lead. Yeah, well, the Duesenbergs were overhead cam at that age, too. But wow. A lot, a lot of the American stuff was like all the Ford, little push rod, flatheads. Yeah. Know? Well, that is pretty neat. I like the dual, the dual distributor drive. I mean, just, it's amazing. So I would assume the, are the contact points inside of there? It looks like it, huh? And no fan. Oh my gosh, I gotta point this out. I've never seen a radiator like that. The V honeycomb. Oh my gosh, how do they do that? Is the water actually flew flow through the tubes through there? Yeah. And the V configuration. That is bizarre. I've never I you know, I've again you work on these things all that. I've never seen that. That's cool, Arnold. Yeah, Mercedes had it's a lot bigger V, and they did that so they get more cooling, you know, area. The bigger the V, the more surface area you have. Yeah. Comparison to a flat. Well, that's it, folks. Again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll keep you posted as uh, we figure out and progress with some of the diagnostics on this 1922 Bentley. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.